Members, we'll move to file item 94. That's AB 2722. Let's give Ms. Burke some room. Thank you. This is file item 94, AB 2722. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2722 by Assembly Member Burke and actually in the greenhouse gases. Ms. Burke, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Throughout our state, millions of Californians are exposed to pollution causing significant health impacts significantly in low-income, disadvantaged communities and communities of color. Our state has been a strong leader in the fight against climate change and reducing pollution, and AB 2722 is a step to ensure that we leave no community behind. Assembly Bill 2722 was crafted with multiple partners in response to Governor Brown's budget to establish a program that supports local climate action in disadvantaged communities. This bill establishes the Transformative Climate Communities Program administered by the Strategic Growth Council to ensure that California is making investments that reduce greenhouse gases and also demonstrates co-benefits for the economy, workforce, and the health of California's most vulnerable communities. We are creating the Transformative Climate Communities Program to link investments directly to local concerns, solutions, and ideas. The Transformative Climate Communities Program will streamline funding for multiple coordinated projects that are implemented at a neighborhood scale and have an array of benefits for the community. AB 2722 creates a one-stop shop with the Strategic Growth Council for cities, counties, and community-based organizations to fund multiple projects. This will not only streamline the application process to implement transformative climate community programs, but will significantly reduce administrative costs by creating one program that can fund many different community plans. While this program is intended to reduce greenhouse gases, we also want to see economic benefits for the people living within these communities through high-quality, well-paid employment opportunities and benefits for small businesses and businesses owned by disabled veterans, minorities, women, and members of the LGBT community. AB 2722 will help cities, local jurisdictions, and communities by making a direct investment in the residents most impacted by pollu pollution and will significantly help Californians to meet our climate change goals. I also want to note that after recent amendments, the Metropolitan Transportation Commission and Caltax are now neutral on this bill, and it has no opposition. I respectfully request an I vote. Seeing and hearing no debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tally a vote. Ayes 41, nose 11. Measure passes. Members, I am prepared to lift the call on file item 91. That's AB 2616. Clerk will post. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the vote. Eyes 43, nose 15. That measure passes. Now members will move to file item 82. That's AB 2460 by Ms. Irwin. Thank you for your patience, Ms. Irwin. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2460 by Assemblymember Irwin and Act Related to Energy. Ms. Irwin, you may open. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. AB 2460 will extend the state's solar thermal program until 2022 and set aside 50 percent of the funds for projects in disadvantaged communities. Solar thermal is a technology that uses heat from the sun to heat water. The state's incentive program is beginning to see success and should be continued. Recent accidents in the headlines are reminders that we must continue to work to reduce our reliance on natural gas. AB 2460 will do just that. In addition to extending the program, the bill includes additional checks and balances on the program. Members, today it is going to be 100 degrees outside, and at all of our homes and in this building, we are burning gas in order to keep our water warm. We can do better. There is no opposition. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Thank you, Ms. Irwin. See no discussion or debate. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. 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 All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote. Who desire to vote? Clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote. Ayes 43, noes 14. The measure passes. Passing temporarily on file items 80 through through 85. File item 86, AB 2523 Mullen, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2523 by Assemblymember Mullen and others, an act relating to elections. Mr. Mullen, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. AB 2523 establishes a limit of $4,200 on campaign contributions for local jurisdictions that have not adopted their own limits. Currently, the vast majority of local jurisdictions have not adopted local ordinances limiting campaign contributions, meaning that contributions much higher than even the average Californian's annual income are being made. AB 2523 is about maintaining local control and affecting only those jurisdictions with no limits. This measure would allow local jurisdictions to enact higher or lower limits 
which would in turn foster those discussions at the local level. $4,200 is a reasonable default limit. It allows candidates the opportunity to mount a challenge campaign, but also prevents exorbitant contributions that create actual corruption or the appearance of corruption. With reasonable limits in place under AB 2523, candidates are forced to reach out to more constituents to fund their campaign, leading to a more robust democratic system. Members, we are simply creating a default limit of $4,200, which I believe is reasonable, and I ask for an I vote. Mr. Harper, you are recognized. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. This bill is attempting to limit the amount of money that is donated in local elections. The end result of this bill will be even more money being spent on independent expenditures. In the 2014 election, over $80 million was spent on candidates and ballot measures through independent expenditure committees. The goal of this bill is intended to make sure that big money donors aren't buying candidates, yet we have campaign disclosure laws that allow voters to understand who is donating to candidates and how much. Once a donor contributes $100 or more to a candidate, their information is reported and made public. Whether a candidate receives $4,200 or $14,000, voters can determine on their own if a candidate has received too much money from a special interest group. We know who the major donors are and the causes that they're fighting for. We know that Tom Steyer spends millions on environmental causes, SEIU spends millions on pro-labor candidates, and the CTA spends millions of dollars for their uh, interests. But we don't need more laws that limit the voice of the voters. We need more disclosure laws that provide transparency to them. I respectfully ask for a no vote. Mr. Wagner, you are recognized. Uh, Thank you. My friend from Huntington Beach covered a lot of what I wanted to say, so I'll dial back a little bit. Um, look, everybody on this floor is subject to the $4,200 restrictions in our own campaigns. We know, we know that we are not being bought at $4,200. We know that we are not selling our souls. We are not selling our votes. We are not selling our office for $4,200. The idea that the limit is somehow keeping us uh, uh, honest and, and above board um, is all is all, frankly, a show. Um, we know the realities of running for office in this state and that the campaign limits um, do not do what they are supposed to do. And the reason they don't do them is exactly as outlined by my friend from Huntington Beach. What ends up happening is you end up divorcing the candidate and the responsibility from to run the campaign from the donors. And we've seen an explosion of special interest, special PACs, money outside of the normal system, money that isn't accountable, that we're not accountable for, for us, that maybe we don't want in support of us, against us, that we have no control over. And it's divorcing the money from the good government. And what we ought be doing again, as my friend from Huntington Beach says, is put us back in control so that we can, in fact, be held accountable. Let's have disclosure so that everybody knows who's paying what to, to contribute to any particular candidate. That's good government, not artificial rules, and not certainly us imposing down on our local jurisdictions artificial rules when, frankly, everybody in this on this floor knows we're not being bought with these contributions. I urge a no vote. Seeing and hearing no further debate, Mr. Mullen, would you like to close? Well, I thank my colleagues uh, for their comments. Um, some colleagues have suggested that we look at uh, a COLA kind of an adjustment. I'll certainly entertain uh, that concept uh, in the Senate. Uh, I share my colleague from Irvine's concern about money finding its way into the political system and independent expenditures, the pro proliferation thereof. Uh, not the topic of this bill. Uh, this is an imperfect system we live in. But what is a glaring omission is that you can have a contribution of any size in a, in a small town council race that most certainly could influence the outcome of the election. And that is what this bill is getting at. I ask for an I vote. The clerk will open the roll. All those vote who desire to vote, 
All those vote who desire to vote. All those vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll and tally the votes, ayes 43, noes 15, the measure passes. We are prepared to lift the call on file item 70 AB 2298 Weber. Clerk will post. All those vote who desire to vote. All those vote who desire to vote. All those vote who desire to vote. Where's it? The clerk will close the roll and tally the votes. I-41, noes 24, the measure passes. Passing temporarily on file items 87 through 131. File item 132, AB 2182, Mullen, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2182 by Assembly Member Mullen and Act Relating to School Athletics. Mr. Mullen, you are recognized. Thank you again, Madam Speaker. AB 2182 establishes a four-year grant-funded pilot program in a total of three school districts to conduct baseline and post-injury neurocognitive testing for student athletes. As a sports fan and a former high school athlete, I recognize the benefits of participating in sports and encourage young people to do so. However, I am concerned about the health and safety of our young athletes. In recent years, growing concerns over sports-related concussions have led to increased attention and legislation on head injuries among young athletes. To further address this issue, we need more research and data to improve the way we identify, report, and treat head injuries in student athletes. This data is also needed to provide parents with information they could use when deciding whether or not to allow their child to participate in sports. Neurocognitive testing establishes a baseline for an athlete's normal neurocognitive function at the beginning of an athletic season. A post-injury retest provides information that is measured against the baseline. This information helps to identify the extent of the injury and the best course of treatment. This bill is not just about the physical health, but also the long-term cognitive health of our high school student athletes, and I ask for an I vote. Seeing no discussion on the item, the clerk will open the roll. All those vote who desire to vote. All those vote who desire to vote. All those vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll and tally the votes. I-61, no zero, the measure passes. Returning to file item 87, AB 2524, Irwin, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2524 by Assembly Member Irwin and others and accolade to criminal justice. Ms. Irwin, you are recognized. Madam Speaker and members, AB 2524 helps bring California's criminal justice data collection and accessibility into the 21st century. This bill requires the Department of Justice to display criminal justice information collected from local law enforcement agencies on the open justice data portal rather than a static annual paper report. The Open Justice Data Portal is a public website that is inter has interactive data charts and a written analysis, as well as an open data platform in which researchers, students, and law enforcement can download raw data and do their own studies. AB 2420 
2524 also standardizes crime reporting by requiring law enforcement to submit data electronically by 2022, which will help save taxpayer money by streamlining the data submission process. This is a bipartisan, good government bill that will allow us to use the data we already collect in a more effective way. I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Seeing no discussion on the item, the clerk will open the roll. All those vote who desire to vote. All those vote who desire to vote. All those vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll and tally the votes. I 62, no zero. The measure passes. File item 89.